Good morning, everybody. This morning, I've been told, well, Pierre, you're the first speaker of the day. It's a bit early, so there might not be a lot of people attending. But in fact, there are a lot of people, and I'm very happy to be here in Mexico City to talk about a topic which is my passion and for which I feel very privileged to work for. The Olympic Games have evolved over time, from the cities which hosted the Games to the participation of women, from the competitiveness of nations to the evolution of performances, the Olympic Games have always been a mirror representing the evolution of society. At the same time, the Olympic Games have always been a trendsetter in the world of big events. If you look at TV production, athletes, clothing and equipment, timing, scoring, the Olympic Games have always been innovating, place the bar higher, define new standards. So in a world where mega cities are thriving, where sports practice is evolving in this urban environment, let's explore together how the greatest event on earth is adapting to this new reality, how we remain relevant, and at the same time, how we keep innovating, defining new standards as a, tra as a trendsetter. 5th of August 2016, the whole world is watching Rio. The whole world is watching the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games. More recently, last month, Pyeongchang, the whole world watching the two Koreas marching together, unified behind the same flag. And this is the power of the Games. The Olympic Games dominate the entire media landscape during two weeks. The recipe is fairly simple. You take all national Olympic committees of the world, you select the very best athletes, and you get them to compete in the ultimate sports mix, 50 disciplines for more than 300 gold medals. In the Olympic Games, there is something for each and every one of us. If we look at the Olympic program, the composition of sports, it's all about Diversity, team sports, individual sports, combat sports, racket sports, water sports, and so on. And it's all about balance. Balance between tradition and innovation. Preserving history on one hand, innovating on the other hand. At the same time today, there is a new reality. We can call these sports the way we want, but here they are. Expression, freestyle, creativity, these are the, the words describing these new sports. They used to be extreme, now they are mainstream. They used to be perceived like this, they are no edgy. So the question we ask ourselves is, how do we adapt? How do we adapt to this new reality? because these sports can be played anywhere, especially in an urban, urban environment. And in a world where there are every day more megacities, megacities meaning cities having more than 10 million people, this number has doubled over the past two decades. So the landscape is changing and sport is adapting to this reality. So how do we evolve? Well, part of the answer is the Olympic program, the composition of sports. And here you see some new disciplines which will be featured for the very first time in two years' time in Tokyo.
So this just gave you an idea of what we will introduce for the first time at the Olympic Games in Tokyo. But we consider innovation goes beyond. We should also look at the current portfolio of disciplines we have. And there are several questions. Well, the world is getting more urban, so how do we bring sport closer to people? How do we bring sport in iconic places? We know attention spans are getting shorter. So how do we review the format? This is what we're doing every single day in collaboration with inter international federations. You see a few examples on the slide. Archery is a good one. Last year, 2017, the World Championships of Archery were organized here in Mexico City, downtown, in the very center of the city. You see a picture of high diving. This is a competition organized by FINA that was in Budapest in the city center. This is a non-urban sport that we are able to bring downtown closer to people. So this is what it has stake for us. Told you about the desire to remain relevant. There is also an imperative to be credible. Looking at these new disciplines, what are the characteristics? What are their uniqueness? Well, more than a sport, it's about lifestyle. Street art, music, video, initiation, showcasing. This is what we want to celebrate when we bring these sports at the Olympic Games. We want to celebrate this diversity and we want to add this urban dimension to the Olympic Games. To do so, the key is to put athletes at the very center of everything we plan and everything we deliver. Here you see a skateboarder, climber, rider, player, surfer. They have one thing in common. They are athletes first. And when you are a top-level athlete, regardless of your sport, the ultimate dream is to make it to the pinnacle event, to compete at the Olympic Games. These past two years, I went to Australia to attend a major surfing competition. I went to Slovenia for a climbing event. I went to France for a BMX freestyle competition. I went to the US for a skateboarding contest. And I had the occasion to discuss with all stakeholders talk to the athletes, to the international federations, to the leagues, to the event organizers. And there is clearly a unity. All the communities are united to make it, as they say, from the streets to the Olympics. So now, how do we get it right? This is where we are. It started four years ago. We have an event which is the Youth Olympic Games. It's an event for athletes aged 15 to 18. And we had this event in Nanjing in China, 2014. And for the first time, we created the Sports Lab. The Sports Lab, you had one venue, four sports, rather sport, skateboarding, wushu, climbing, but no competition, all about engagement initiation and showcasing. You come as a spectator, you watch, you participate. That was a tremendous success. Next step, well, at the end of this year, we go to Buenos Aires. We'll have the Youth Olympic Games as well. And there, we'll have an ur urban park. In this park, it's about competition, warm-up, initiation, showcasing entertainment. I was in Buenos Aires last week to review the plan, spend some time with the organizers, and the message was clear. We're organizing more than a competition. It's a full experience, and everything we plan and we design is about the experience of spectators. And you're not passive anymore. You come, you enjoy, you try. This is a good example. You see here the BMX Freestyle Park. In this urban park I just showed you, we'll have BMX Freestyle, but only two days of competition. So the question we ask ourselves is, what do we do with this big structure? Well, 
let's change the approach. We don't call it anymore the BMX Freestyle Park. We call it the main stage. And when we design this, we think about the two days of competitions, but we also think about welcoming kids on this structure. We think about organizing concerts on this structure so that it goes well beyond sport. And this is what we're currently doing. In this urban park, we also have a canal with the famous women's bridge. Well, with this setup, here it's the very center of the city for those familiar with Buenos Aires, we're in Puerto Madero. There we will bring canoe and rowing. Canoe and rowing in the urban park. Two sports which are not urban by nature. But we've been working with the Canoe Federation on new disciplines. We've, working, we've been working with the Rowing Federation on new formats. And this allows us to bring these sports in front of large crowds. Looking at rowing, rowing at the Olympic Games, the course is 2,000 meters. Here in Buenos Aires, we reduce it to 500, shorter. At the Olympic Games, you have eight lanes. In Buenos Aires, four, more compact. So suddenly, you make the sport shorter, more compact, more urban. I told you about the balance. This is the balance between traditional and more modern sports, bringing it into an urban setting. Well, after Buenos Aires, we'll go to Tokyo. We'll bring, I told you before, we'll bring some new urban disciplines in the world's largest city. But we're conscious that if we want urbanization to be sustainable, urbanization has to come with innovation. Innovation, well, we're looking at different angles. First being venue sharing. We'll display some of these sports in a way that has never been seen before. Venue sharing in Tokyo, the three-on-three -three basketball venue will transform into a climbing venue. We're also looking at the behind the scene component and what can we take from behind the scene to put in the middle of the scene. Think about warm up. This moment right before an Olympic final when tension is at its highest. Everything happened behind the scene. How can we make it part of the show, part of the experience? So these are the discussions we're having with the federations to deliver more than a competition, to deliver an experience. I spoke about the necessity to remain relevant, the imperative to be credible, but beyond these evolutions, there is also the deep conviction that we can inspire, inspire by bringing sport closer to people. And this is this is the power of the Olympic Games, to generate these unique emotions, to inspire kids to try out new sports, to inspire them to give their best, to inspire some of them to dream about one day representing their country. So that after Tokyo, there will be millions of new climbers, millions of new skaters, millions of new riders, and millions of new athletes. Thank you very much.